Hey guys, Steve here with another spring tutorial. Um, so today I thought I would go through um, just building building a spring app from, from scratch that's going to connect to a MongoDB database and uh, store and retrieve some da data from it because um, before we've actually done some demos and tutorials around you know using a relational database and we haven't really done a NoSQL DB yet so I thought I'd do do that here today and just uh, you know see if we can write a quick little app that will connect to MongoDB and you know store some data and we'll uh, we'll uh, talk about how th how that works and and how much it is similar to connecting to any other data database within a Spring a application. Um, so to start off with here, I have a MongoDB running in Docker on my machine. Um, I plan on doing a tutorial series on Docker um, soon. Um, so if you're interested in seeing that, obviously subscribe to the channel and hit the not notification bell um, and you'll see when, uh, when I up upload those videos. But you can see here in, in, in my uh, terminal, in this tab, I have the a Docker container running within a Mong, or, sorry, Docker, or a MongoDB Docker container running in this tab. And in the second tab, then, I have a Mongo shell running. It's a, it's a second doc, Docker container, and the two of them are linked together, so I, I, I'm able to actually query the database through this uh, shell. Um, so if we have a look and run this command show dbs, uh, you can see that it's just a simple out of, out of the box clean da database, nothing has been done with it yet. Um, so that's the date database, that's, that's going to be running there in the background. Um, so I have my Intel IntelliJ open, we're going to create a new project, it's going to be a Maven project, um, W Steve. Demo Mongo. Uh, next, I like to have a hyphen between them and the folder names. So this is a this is a clean, uh, fresh Maven project with absolutely not nothing in it. We just have the sta standard uh, the, uh, palm. So what we're going to do first is we are going to set up the dependencies that we need for our project. So namely, that's going to be the uh, Spring dependencies, and we're going to use the Spring Data Starter uh, MongoDB dependency. So the way I like to do it is I like, like to use the dependency management section and define a dependency in there, um, which is going to be the Spring Boot dependencies. And that group is or the spring framework dot boot and we're going to use the latest version so as of now it's 1.5.9 release and for this to work then we need to tell it that this this dependencies palm is obviously it's just a palm because it, 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 it defines all the versions of um, all the different libraries that are available under this uh, release of, of Spring Boot. Um, so, oops, we need to set a scope of import so that it will, so that when I actually define a dependency in my actual dependency section, so we're going to have Spring Boot Starter Data MongoDB. We also need to give uh, the group ID, and you can see there now we have kind of a little arrow here saying that um, this this version of this dependency has been inherited. So it's been inherited from this dependency management section from this version of the Spring Boot dependencies. Uh, thing here now. It would work the same way if you had um, the Spring Boot Starter Parent defined in your parent section, but I don't really like to do that because in if you are you know developing this app, you know in a real uh, IT environment, you, you know and you're using things like 
uh, continuous integration, continuous deployment, uh, artifact management, stuff like that. Uh, your organization might have its own kind of parent project that they want you to define within your app. And if you're if if you're using the Spring Boot starter parent, then it kind of that kind of interferes with that. So this is the way I like to do it. I like to have the the dependency ma management stuff here. Um, so that's it. Um, I want to make sure that. Um, my IDE knows what Java version I'm using. So I'm going to use Java version 1.8. And one last thing then is my build section. And that's going to have a one, one plugin for now. And group ID is org.spring framework.boot. And the artifact ID is the Spring Boot Maven plugin. So having that Spring Boot Maven plugin there um, allows us to package this app application up as a, a jar file that we can just deploy somewhere and run then. Um, so that's it for our POM file. Uh, obviously we have our MongoDB um, library here. And this is going to this is going to provide you know a lot of the stuff we need um, for actually creating a Spring Boot app and connecting it to a MongoDB database. So next thing then we're going to create our our starter class. So we make sure we put it in a, a package and don't ever put anything in the default package. It messes with stuff terribly. Um, so this is going to be Spring Boot application. Um, I'm going to implement the command line runner here um, for this project. And I need to override this run method. So basically what happens when this when this Spring application starts up, because it's been it, it, it's implementing the command line runner. Um, the first thing it's, go it's going to do is it's going to execute this run method. So, so this is where we're going to put some code to actually, you know, store and retrieve and update maybe some some records in our MongoDB database. Um, so we just need a public static void main string array args, obviously for our entry point. And then we just use the spring application class dot run, and it's going to be application dot class. So this same application class, and we just pass in the arguments there too as well. So I'm not going to do anything more with this class for now, but it's going to be it's going to allow us to uh, connect to the database or and you know run some queries and store some data in the database. Um, the next thing I want to do is create the models. So create a new package here called models. And we're just going to create one class under this called customer, say. Say we're, say we're storing information about our customers and we want to you know, know who they are. So we have a simple customer class. Um, we need an ID. So IDs in MongoDB are traditionally strings. We're going to have another string for a first name. We're going to have another string for a last name. And we're going to have some uh, constructors. So we're going to have a default constructor, which doesn't take any arguments. And we're going to have a constructor that accepts a first name. Oops. And the last name. And make sure we set up our variables. And then we just need some getters and setters. So we're just going to generate them all using the IDE, nice and quick. And I'm just going to put a. I'm going to override the. 
toString method of the object, and we're just going to return a string dot format. Um, create a format for our string. So customer open square bracket id equals percent s. So we're going to replace that with a string in a second. First name equals percent s. We're going to replace that with another string, and last name equals percent s. Close our square bracket, and then. So our first string is going to be replaced by the ID, second string is going to be replaced by the first name, and last string is going to be replaced by the last name. And close that. And we just need to do one last thing now for, um, for Spring Framework and obviously MongoDB to know that um, this ID thing is an actual ID. We're going to annotate it with this um, ID annotation here. Now it's it's not the same as uh, when you're dealing with the uh, uh, JPA entities. It's not the um, JPA ID an annotation. It's this Org Spring Framework Data Annotation ID. And um, so it's a little bit different. Just to be just to be aware aware of that. But that's it for our class. Again, just like JPA. Um, we're just creating a plain old Java object here with some with some uh, properties on it and some getters and setters just very very sim simple stuff and this class is, go is going to represent the structure of our um, NoSQL documents in the MongoDB database. So lastly then um, if you're familiar with the other uh, tutorials on um, the JPA stuff and connecting to relational date database, you will know that the next thing we need is um, a repository class. So I'm going to create another package called repositories and we're going to have a class called customer repository and it's going to be an in interface so make sure you uh, create it as an interface create that and then again just like the other tutorials we're going to extend so in in the other ones we extended like the CRUD repository which allowed us to do create read update delete uh, requests against our relational date databases here we're just going to um, extend the Mongo repository so it's pretty much exactly the same as the other things um, and it's going to deal with the customer class and the ID is of type string. Again, looks very similar to our relational databases, right? So again, here you have the ability to define your own. Um, so this in interface on its own gives you, you know, find one, find all, save and delete. Um, but, you, but you can extend that and you can, you know, define other ones like uh, find by say first name and pass in the uh, first name as a parameter and that's all all you need to do to enable that um, query then you know is uh, define that um, method within your in inter inter interface spring then takes care of filling in all the uh, the logic behind that um, so that's it for our repository. Now, we, so so we have our our data object, we have our repository. Now we just need to start using the repository. So if we go back to our application class, so I'm going to auto wire in the customer repository here. So we create a a variable to hold it, and as always, we use constructor auto wiring because that's the best practice. We just create a constructor for our application class, and here we pass in the customer repository, and we make sure that we have our class variable set to that. And then down below, then so first of all, I'm I'm just going to create one um, entry within the database. So here I just need to call customer repository dot save and new customer and say Joe logs. Okay. 
So that's it. Um, when I run this app, it should come in here and run this line, line of code and actually store something within the database now. Um, so just, just a quick refresh now. If we go back here and do show DBs, we can still re see we just have the admin config local. Um, I've done no configuration here to say in, in the actual app to say what database connect to connect to or where the database is, etc. Um, but what what Spring does is it automatically configures itself to connect to because I'm using the Mongo library, it's going to automatically configure itself to connect to localhost port 27017, which is the standard Mongo port. Um, and my Mongo DB here is available on localhost 27017. So the app, you know, without any extra configuration, should be able to connect to it no, no problem. If you wanted to you know, if you had a MongoDB database running somewhere else, out on the internet, on a server somewhere, you just um, create your application.properties file in the resources folder, and you define those um, properties there. You give it the, the host name of the Mongo database you want to connect to, the port number, maybe you have a, a database already connected, so you give it a DB name, Etc. Stuff, stuff like that. So it's pretty straightforward. It's just standard Spring configuration. Um, but let's run this for now. For now, um, we just hit the the play button here beside the main method, and run it. And we should see here that it basically runs. It will open a connection to the database and store that one record. Um, and then the application should shut down again because that's all it had to do. Um, so if we go back to our console, um, if you look here, you can see that we, for for a brief period of time, we had two connections open. So one connection is my Mongo shell, and one connection was the actual application itself. But if I go back to my shell here, so on the last show DBs thing that I ran, I had these three. If I run it again, I have a new one now called test. So the, so the default behavior for, uh, for Spring when it connects to MongoDB is to create a database called test if it has the permissions to do so, um, which in this case it does. Um, again, you could config configure whatever the database name you want is within the Spring configuration. We won't go in, into that now. Um, but if I use test, so I've switched in into that DB and I show collections, I can see I now have a customer collection. So that's going to store all of my co customers. So if I do a db.customer.find, so this would be to find all the records in there. I should see that I have um, one record here. And you can see the ID for it is that, and it, it, it was created with a class of type this, so it knows what class within your, within your Spring application created it and what it needs to map it back to afterwards, etc. And you can see the first name and the last name here, so Joe Blogs. Now what if I wanted to retrieve this record from the database? So I could do that using the, the method that I created on the customer repository. So I could create a new customer object here and say it equals the customer repository dot find by first name and give it the first name of Joe. So it should go connect to the database, find that record based on the first name. And then we're just going to do a simple system dot out dot print line Uh, customer dot two string, and we're going to use the handy two string uh, method that we overrode on the customer object to print out it, print print it out nicely to the to the console. So let's run that again. So this is going to connect to the database. It's going to query the da the database by the first name of Joe. It's going to find that record. It's going to pass it back to the application, and it's going to print that out to the console. 
So let's see that happening. And we can see here that we have successfully retrieved that record and printed it to the to the console. So that's handy. So that's so that's using our you know our find by first name. If we wanted to find by say just the ID, we could copy this ID and just say dot find oops dot find one and the find one method expects a string with the ID in it. So I could use the ID to try and find it. And if I run this, I should get the same result. I have again I have this the record printed to the data, to the console, um, and I could obviously, you know, do a do a delete as well. And that doesn't actually pass back anything, so I can get rid of this. And I can get rid of that. So this would this would delete that record from the database. So if I run this, and that's completed. So if I go back to here. And do a db customer find again. I can see now that there's no records there. Um, so I guess that's pretty much it for this tu tutorial. You can see that you know connecting to a NoSQL database and connecting to a relational database from Spring from the Spring framework and using Spring Boot, they're very very similar to each other. And um, so if you can do one, you should definitely be able to do the, do the other. You just you just need need to be aware of how the data is stored under the covers within the data, data database and what the differences are there between relational databases and NoSQL data, databases. Um, but that's it. It's it's a very very e easy thing to do, very easy thing to get to get working. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you if you did like the video, subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification button so you get updated whenever I upload more tutorials and thanks for watching.